In Delaware, the largest growth in population is Indian Americans moving from India. You cannot go to a 7-Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. It's a large, very identifiable Somali community. I might add, if you ever come to the train station with me, you'll notice that uh, I have great relationships with them because there's an awful lot of driving cabs. I mean, you got the first sort of mainstream African American yeah. who is articulate and bright and, and, and clean and nice looking guy. I mean, it's, that's a storybook, man. Yeah. Jesse Jackson, running for the Democratic nomination in 1984, addresses a crowd at Tendley Baptist Church in Philadelphia. Eight Democrats running for the nomination. This time around, you got a chance and you got a choice. You want somebody who marched for you to get the right to vote. You got a choice. You want somebody who challenged corporate America to hire you and give you contracts. You got a choice. It's choice time. All this talk about qualification. I mean, you got the first sort of mainstream African American yeah. who is articulate and bright and, and, and clean and nice looking guy. I mean, it's, that's a storybook, man. Yeah. Former U.S. Vice President Joe Biden, who's tipped to run for the White House in 2020, has been fending off allegations of sexual misconduct. Folks, in the coming month, I expect to be talking to you about a whole lot of issues, and I'll always be direct with you. But today, I want to talk about gestures of support and encouragement that I've made to women and some men that have made them uncomfortable. And I always try to be, uh, in my career, I've always tried to make a human connection. That's my responsibility, I think. I shake hands, I hug people, I, I grab men and women by the shoulders and say, you can do this. And, and, uh, and whether they're women, men, young, old, it's, it's the way I've always been. It's the way I've tried to show I care about them and I'm listening. I said, shaking hands, uh, hands on the shoulder, a hug, uh, encouragement. And, now, and now it's all about taking selfies together. Uh, you know, social norms have begun to change, they've shifted, and the boundaries of protecting personal space have been reset. And I get it. I get it. I hear what they're saying. I understand it. And I'll be much more mindful. That's my responsibility. My responsibility, and I'll meet it. Okay? R okay? Promise? I'll bet you're as bright as you're good looking. I tell you, I tell you what. What's your favorite subject? Journalism. Like Journalism. Whoa. Whoa. I better be more circumspect in my answers. Those guys back there. Look, come here. Come here. Go ahead. The next question. <laughs> I love it. Okay, you over here. Washington Post, New York Times, all these guys. <laughs> you ought to go back and talk to them, okay? All right? And by the way, that's one of the things that's a dangerous idea. You know, as these guys will tell you, I'm not always their favorite subject. But the truth of the matter is, the reason we are who we are, it's called a free press continuing to denigrate. Woo! It's dangerous. Hi everyone, I'm Elaine Quijano. Another woman is accusing former Vice President Joe Biden of inappropriate behavior. The Hartford Current reports Amy Lapos, a former aide to Connecticut Congressman Jim Himes, claims Biden grabbed her by the head at a fundraiser in 2009. 
In a statement to CBS News, Lapo said, quote, men who invade a woman's personal space touch women inappropriately, sexually harass women, and feed rape culture have no place in a position of power. Referring to this type of behavior as simply affection or grandpa-like or friendly is ridiculously dismissive and part of the problem. That swirl of negative press has taken attention away from another potentially damaging revelation. Ukraine's former top prosecutor speaking to political website The Hill accuses Biden of pressuring Kiev into sacking him. Caleb Morpin digs deeper. Former Vice President Joe Biden is caught up in a bit of a scandal. His name has been floated for the last year or so as a possible Democratic challenger to Donald Trump in the 2020 elections. But now everyone is talking about his habit of getting frisky with both women and girls in public. He leans down, smells my hair, and then plants this big, long kiss on the top of my head. Joe Biden's presidential campaign hasn't even officially begun, and people are trying to knock him out of the running. Joe Biden is facing new accusations of inappropriate behavior. Joe has a habit of doing things right out in the open. And while everyone is focusing on this rather touchy subject, some of his earlier deeds are not getting as much attention. Last year, in an interview, Joe bragged about getting Getting Ukraine's general prosecutor fired. He says he was standing up to corruption. I had gotten a commitment from Poroshenko they would take action against the state prosecutor, and they didn't. I said, I'm telling you, you're not getting a billion dollars. I said, you're not getting a billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> got fired. And they put in place someone who was solid at the time. Well, it just so happens that the general prosecutor was investigating an energy firm in which Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, was heavily invested. Burisma Holdings is an energy corporation in Ukraine, and Hunter Biden, the son of the former vice president, has made a rather handsome profit from it, especially in the aftermath of the 2014 events in Ukraine in which pro-EU forces took power. That prosecutor was looking into three different instances of foul play from Hunter's cash cow. However, all it took was a phone call from Papa Joe, and that prosecutor was out. We had plans that included interrogations and other crime investigation procedures into all members of the executive board, including Hunter Biden. Members of the board obtained funds as well as another US-based legal entity, Rosemont Seneca Partners, LLC, for consulting services. One might argue that perhaps Joe Biden had no idea about his son's financial interests. They say he's the vice president. Perhaps he was too busy running the country to pay attention to his son's finances. However, if he watched any American media, he couldn't have missed it. During the Ukraine events of 2014, the White House dismissed any notion that Hunter Biden's financial dealings had any impact on their decisions. I'm wondering if the State Department has any concerns or any thoughts about the vice president's son joining the board of directors of this Ukrainian gas, um, gas company. No, he's a private citizen. So, as reels and reels of video show that Joe Biden has some pretty strange proclivities and more women come forward saying they do not appreciate his affection, at this point it's pretty clear that Joe has some even stranger skeletons in his closet that he would like to keep buried. But Biden has nothing but disdain for millennials, right? So that's pretty much half the party now with the Dem in the Democratic Party. People forget Joe Biden is a horrible politician. <laughs> He voted for the uh, Re Glass-Steagall repeal. He voted for the Iraq war. He's for the surveillance state. Um, lots of other bad things. He, make, he, vo he voted to make it harder on students with their loans. He voted in favor of Wall Street over students. It's because we're like looking that. for a handout. Yeah, yeah. Just... Millennials will be 40% of the electric electorate in 2020. Uh, Biden trashes millennials in his quest to become even less likable. Uh, this is from January 12th of 2018, but here's the video. 
Here's here's what he had to say about you know how millennials, right? They're, everybody talks about they're the first generation who's not going to do better than their parents, and uh, there's very b little job uh, opportunities. And remember, didn't somebody say, well, if I was a barista and I was 28 years old and I didn't have any job opportunities, I would want a revolution too. And a lot of people, people so people understand that the economy is not working for a lot of people. 80 percent of workers live paycheck to paycheck. Okay, 30 million Americans still don't have health care. Okay, uh, you know that 43% of all homeless people have jobs? So uh, here's what Joe Biden says to all that. So the younger generation now tells me how tough things are. Give me a break. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that's funny. Not like I hear your problems. Yeah, that's what a politician is supposed to do. I'm supposed to listen to your concerns, and every generation has their own concerns. And he says, "You got concerns? Get out of here." So the younger generation now tells me how tough things are. Give me a break. <laughs> no, no, I have no empathy for it. Give me a break. I have no, not nothing. Fuck you. I'm not listening to you guys. We don't like you either, Joe. <laughs> We're not fans. That's what he's saying to 40% of the electorate. No, no, I don't get nothing. I got nothing for you guys. <laughs> Who says that? Because here's the deal, guys. We decided we were going to change the world, and we did. We did. We finished the civil rights movement to the first stage. The women's movement came to the beam. So, oh, we, check. We check. Check. Change the world. We've Civil done it, right. everybody. You're He's, being able. You're He's, able to enjoy equal rights, it, and you female millennials, you have more rights than you should have. So I don't want to hear it. Everything's done. We changed the world. So is that is that is, is that him challenging millennials to go change the world? Like as if they're just sitting around complaining again? No, they're they're sitting around working two and three jobs, Joe.